as I speak, I'm going to ask the white Americans in the room to please repeat after me. <clears throat> on behalf of myself and on behalf of my country, <laughs> to you and all African Americans, <laughs> from the beginning of our nation's history, in honor of your ancestors and on behalf of your children, Please hear this from my heart. I apologize. Please forgive us. With this prayer, I acknowledge the depth of the evils that have been perpetrated against black people. From slavery to lynchings to white supremacist laws. Ever since the opening of one of the oldest vaults in history, the world has since then spiralled into a buzzing sphere of resounding shock. The old blinkers on the eyes of plenty of people around the globe have fallen off their eyes in a flash, and they can now see the structure of lies which they have been made to hold on to with their lives and their belief system for so long, without any doubts or consternation whatsoever. But the news is not yet over. There is yet more shocker in the way. You're advised to brace yourself for what you're about to hear. Stop what you're doing, download this video, and share it on every social media site you can find because this shit just got crazy. Vladimir Putin just told his entire nation that they now serve black Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, people of Russia, I see. Today, we stand on the precipice of a monumental revolution. A moment that redefines not only our understanding of history, but also the path forward for our great nation. In an extraordinary discovery hidden beneath centuries of lore and legend, we have opened what can only be described as the oldest vault known to mankind. What we found within its ancient confines challenges the very fabric of our beliefs and heralds a new dawn for our country. These figures preserved against the sands of time reveal a truth that is as profound as it is transformative. As your president, I see this moment not as a challenge to our beliefs, but as an opportunity to embrace a wider, more inclusive understanding of our history and spirituality. From this day forward, let us proclaim our nation under the guidance of Black Jesus. So many talks, turbulent reactions, outragings, and all kinds of activities in relation to the recent unveiling of black biblical icons to the world by the President of the Russian Federation, Vladimir Putin, hasn't died down just yet. As a matter of fact, the commotion continues steadily on the rise. You remember that yesterday I gave you a video about one Dr. Kihuran Kuba, who is a Ugandan scholar specializing in classical African history. He spoke and said that one thing that the white person did when they colonized Africa is that they also colonized information 
and that really shows that much of the information that you were fed was whitewashed and made to align with the desires that the white person had at that time including jesus so a lot of these biblical paintings and images were destroyed during the renaissance time there were museums that were able to preserve these images one of them was in russia so putin recently decided that he was going to open the vault and expose all of the images a lot of people are surprised that the images are of darker complexion people well archaeologists and painters from all around the world have come together to confirm that the paint on these um biblical images or paintings is the original paint and it, it is not lighter paint that has oxidized um over time and a lot of people are in question of this because of the images that have been and are currently being depicted of biblical figures which, which does not align with the ancient images just the thought alone that a white man opened up the vault and let everyone see this but people are still mad why would you be mad you should be happy remember this is chess not checkers Putin did this because you know 2024 the black Anunnaki is about to return and their time is up. So they was thinking, hey, if we could get some black people on our side, maybe the Anunnaki. You can really see that Russia has been holding a lot of important information for the world. And I guess this is why some of the Western nations do not find any common ground that they can share with Russia. Because Russia is out to liberate the world. It is out there to share true information because true liberation can only come when we have true and factual information. News of the unveiling has been a great shocker to the entire globe, as the display of these black biblical icons in their unrivaled authenticity did not only challenge long-held mistruths and wrong beliefs which has been adopted for centuries now, but it did shake down the very firmly forged roots of religious falsehoods, which obviously has been conspiratorially championed for as long as any one of us can remember today. It's only been days now, the 23rd of this month of March, 2024, since the Russian President Vladimir Putin addressed the nation in Moscow. In a resounding video, the passionate president has been shown sitting at a table and opening a triptych. Here, a narrator had said, Today, Vladimir Putin reveals to the world a secret that Europeans have been hiding from Africans for more than a millennium. That the person of the name, Jesus, was black. As some of us should already have known, when the European Renaissance happened, all the global images were seized and whitewashed by Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. Um, it's always about the highest order of heroism, the highest order of sacrifice, the highest order of saintliness. These are the pieces that for centuries were anchors for spirituality in Russia. Icons installed magnificently in churches, privately in homes, and even quietly on soldiers' lapels. They are considered a pathway to prayer. You'd approach the icon and you would see something that is expected to be seen. You don't want to be surprised. And that familiarity leads you to a contemplative prayer state that is very spiritual to the believer. Icons dating back to the 14th century brought together from private collections across Russia. It's very beautiful. It gives you goose pimples. It's a remarkable exhibition. It's an exhibition which feeds the senses. Everything is so grey outside at the moment, and here suddenly it's a feast for the eyes. And it's a feast that marks 100 years since religious icons started to be recognised as works of art. Before then, they were mainly viewed as religious objects, often left blackened over the centuries by the passage of time and added layers of paint. When we learned how to remove the dark layers, we discovered underneath an overwhelming... And just hold on a second, did you hear that? Let us hear that part again. When we learned how to remove the dark layers, we discovered underneath an overwhelming... Did you hear that? Now let us take it a little slower this time to be sure. When we learned how to remove the dark layers, we discovered underneath an overwhelming... That's the part. The images were whitewashed. And then the other old images were hidden in vaults all over Europe and Russia and they all agreed to keep the old images a secret amongst them. But that secret is what is being gradually exposed this day by Putin, of which there are those who thinks of the act as a form of warfare, seeing as the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO, is on the verge of nuking his country, and so he's had to reveal that the Christ and Mary were black people and he has all the images, about 1,700 pictures to prove. There's been all kinds of speculation which continues to mount since the offshoot of this incident. 
but the basis of what stands now for Vladimir Putin and the Russian Federation is this. From now on, like he has announced a few days ago, Russia only worships Black Jesus. Let's listen attentively to the speech. Ladies and gentlemen, people of Russia, today we stand on the precipice of a monumental revolution, a moment that redefines not only our understanding of history, but also the path forward for our great nation. In an extraordinary discovery hidden beneath centuries of lore and legend, we have opened what can only be described as the oldest vault known to mankind. What we found within its ancient confines challenges the very fabric of our beliefs and heralds a new dawn for our country. Within this vault, we discovered figures of bi biblical proportions, characters that many have read about, debated and revered. These figures, preserved against the sands of time, reveal a truth that is as profound as it is transformative. They are all black. This revelation, this undeniable truth, stands before us not as a contradiction to our faith, but as a testament to the diversity and unity that faith embodies. As your president, I see this moment not as a challenge to our beliefs, but as an opportunity to embrace a wider, more inclusive understanding of our history and spirituality. Russia, in its rich tapestry of cultures, traditions and people, is uniquely positioned to lead the world into this new era of understanding and acceptance. From this day forward, let us proclaim our nation under the guidance of Black Jesus, a figure who represents not just the cornerstone of Christian faith, but also a symbol of the universal values of love, compassion, and brotherhood. This Black Jesus, whose likeness and history have been unveiled from the oldest vault, is a message to us all that divinity knows no color, that spiritual truth transcends race, and that our common humanity binds us more tightly than our differences divide us. Let this discovery remind us that history is not just the story of those who wield power, but also of those whose contributions have been overlooked or forgotten. It challenges us to re-examine what we know, to question our assumptions, and to open our hearts to the broader possibilities of understanding and faith. As we embark on this journey of discovery and understanding, let us do so with open minds and compassionate hearts. Let us build a nation that truly reflects the teachings of Black Jesus, a nation that stands for justice, equality and love for all, regardless of race or creed. Dmitry Peskov, press secretary of the President of Russian Federation, highlighted the special significance of icons in Russian military history and added that the image of savior not made by hand has been the protective icon of Russian troops over several centuries. Guess you would want to know what the savior not made by hand is all about. The savior not made by hand icon is a canonical depiction of the face of Jesus Christ which, according to legend, was miraculously imprinted on a cloth he used to wipe his face. This image was depicted on the banners of the Russian army as well as placed over the gates of fortresses. Soldiers have always considered it their patron, while civilians viewed it as their protector and savior. This is just nothing short of amazingly revealing. To understand in this light that President Putin and the Russian Federation have always firmly acknowledged the undeniable significance and miracle of the life and death of the one called Jesus, a false name by the way, as he was Hebrew and Jesus is no Hebrew name, and had clung to it all along for sovereignty and safety. Whereas the blacks who have been enslaved, discriminated, tossed about back and forth in the earth all their lives have been entrapped mostly in the ignorance of their own foundation and story. The savior not made by hand icon, which in the past belonged to defense minister of the Russian Empire, Pyotr Vanovsky, and whose replicas Russian President Vladimir Putin presented to the military in the Special Operations Zone, was purchased from a private collection in the US. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov had told TASS, one of the most cited Russian news agencies on a Tuesday, 18th April 2023. Interestingly, this very well leads us to the somewhat unpopular story of how the savior not by hand icon may have been purchased from this private collection in the USA. 
This was the month of August 2011, and a priceless painting of supposedly the true face of Jesus that had been missing for 150 years was recovered after a thief stole it from a trailer and tried to sell it to a church. The painting, which had turned up in Madisonville, Tennessee, is based on the Vale of Veronica, the said cloth believed to have been used to wipe the heavy sweats off Jesus' face on that historic day when he painfully trekked to his crucifixion. Welcome back. A minor theft might have turned into a major religious discovery. A missing artifact was found in the closet of a Tennessee motorhome. Volunteer TV's John Trainer talked with the owner of a rare painting who didn't know what he had. John? Yeah, and it makes you wonder what you might have in your house. In this case, it was an authentic 19th century painting of the Veil of Veronica. It's like a story ripped from a Hollywood screenplay. A small road in the mountains of Tennessee, a living room in a motorhome, and a 150-year-old painting blessed by Pope Leo XIII. This is the true face of Jesus Christ, one of a handful of paintings based on the cloth used to wipe Jesus' face before his crucifixion, known as the Veil of Veronica. Its owner, a 73-year-old man who didn't want to be identified. The piece fell into the hands of hapless thief Kelly Gormley, who decided the best place to sell a religious artifact was to a church. It was owned by a 73-year-old man, known only as Frosty, who kept it in a cloth bag inside a cupboard in his motorhome. Frosty had told VolunteerTV.com, a major online media outlet, that he had lived in the house for 17 years, and the painting has been in there, in his bedroom, ever since. This, the elderly man had informed, feeling obviously quite stunned at the discovery. <laughs> I've lived here for about 17 years. It's been in there, either in there or in my bedroom, ever since. So how does a holy relic go from the holy city to Monroe County? Well, the man known as Frosty tells us he got it as a present and hung it on his wall 20 years ago, but three years later it found a home in this cloth bank bag and was thrown in his closet until police say it was stolen by Kelly Gormley, who tried to sell it to this Madisonville church. The police say Gormley broke into the motorhome and stole the painting, before trying to sell it off to St. Joseph the Worker Church in Madisonville, Tennessee. But the church, realizing the significance of the painting, alerted the police who then arrested Gormley. The church told the sheriffs, the sheriffs made the arrest, and a piece of religious history was uncovered. You know, at first, uh, obviously, it was a, a big surprise for us uh, that something like this might even, you know, be in, in East Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Normally you'd expect to find something like this in a museum or maybe in, in Rome, in the Vatican. The painting is now under lock and key in a secret location. Gormley is in prison for theft and Frosty is overwhelmed that a treasure was laying hidden in his home. You know, I know they really wanted it bad, but I said, no, nah, I don't think I'll be partnering with it. Now the church is now working with Rome to authenticate and appraise the painting. If it is real, it is invaluable to the church. According to legend, a follower had in the past dabbed Jesus' face with the cloth as he bore his cross, imprinting his very likeness onto it. Astonishing, isn't it? Afterwards, the handful of paintings which were then based on this singular material are therefore thought to be actual likenesses of Jesus' face. But this was the real one. This one in particular, was at some point blessed, even by Pope Leo XIII. But the story of the Saviour not made by hand does not end here, nonetheless. This very story you have just now heard can only be termed as the mere child of the real history in question. The Veil of Veronica. And just hold on a second, amazing viewers. If you've gotten up to this point in this video, then it would mean that you've actually settled in and are having an interesting viewing already. Don't forget to kindly support our works if you haven't already by hitting that like button in front of you, sharing video with your friends and families to keep spreading our eye-opening black narrative, and kindly subscribing to stay put for more interesting contents in the way. We are delighted to have you always with us. The Veil of Veronica is a Catholic relic which, according to legend, bears the true likeness of Jesus Christ. However, this story is not recorded in its present form until the Middle Ages. The most recent version of the legend recounts that Saint Veronica from Jerusalem encountered Jesus as he wearily walked down the Via Dolorosa bearing his cross on the way to Calvary. 
When she had paused to wipe the sweat off Jesus' face with her veil, his image was imprinted mysteriously on the cloth. The event is commemorated as the Sixth Station of the Cross. According to some versions, Veronica later travelled to Rome to present the cloth to the Emperor Tiberius. It is believed, however, that the veil possesses miraculous properties, being able to quench thirst, cure blindness, and sometimes even raise the dead. It was not until the 14th century that the Veronica became a central icon in the Western Church. Now let's go back to the present. The icon, replicas of which the President gave to servicemen in the Kherson region and the Lugansk People's Republic, were previously purchased from a private collection in the US of A, the Kremlin official had said. He stressed that the replicas would stay in the Kherson region and the Lugansk People's Republic, LPR, while President Putin would hand the original over to the main cathedral of Russia's armed forces. In the past, this icon belonged to Pyotr Vanovsky, who served as Russia's defense minister from 1881 to 1898. Peskov highlighted the special significance of icons in Russian military history, and added that the image of savior not made by hand has been the protective icon of Russian troops over several centuries. Going forward, the said ritualistic act of having these icons stationed at his nation's fortresses and war posts is what Russian President Putin had also done this time in his visit to the headquarters of the Dnieper Battle Group on the Kherson Front and the headquarters of the National Guard East Battle Group in the Lugansk People's Republic (LPR), a self-proclaimed breakaway state in eastern Ukraine that is supported by Russia. During his visit, the head of state heard reports from military commanders on the situation on the Kherson, Zaporozhye and Lugansk fronts. This was the head of state's first visit to the Kherson region and the LPR. Previously, Putin had visited Russia's new regions as well for the same reason when he travelled to Mariupol in the Donetsk People's Republic. He has never failed in observing this ritual. However, it has become really curious. Amazingly curious to be precise, seeing the vigorous effort President Putin is putting into the revolutionary assertion of his faith these recent times. This is nothing short of admirable, regardless of the massive speculations and barrages of opinions such actions have bestured from his critiques and opponents. Well, well, well. You know, there's a lot of Arabic people and Palestinian people, a lot of people over there with blue eyes and reddish brown hair. I don't, I don't know where they got it from over there in the Middle East. I'm sure it was some kind of gene. Just like being black and just like being white, it has to do with your genes, the color of your eyes. I'm sure we could find out. But Putin and dusting off his black Jesus from the Kremlin attic, that is one heck of a thing. Why are we just finding out? Did I think Jesus was blonde and blue-eyed? I didn't really care. Mr. Putin, you drew the race card. Now what you going to do with it? You got all these black people excited that you have a picture of a black Jesus. You're saying black. To me, sir, it just looks like a dark Jesus because I don't know what kind of paint or colors or whatever they had over there. Anyway, Mr. Putin, you're sneaky. You're going to nuke us, aren't you? You're just doing something to hurt the whole world before you nuke us all. Anyway, black people, I'm happy for you. Something ought to make you happy. I mean, come on now. Because y'all been really upset for years, huh? I hope, I hope this helps you, just like when I voted for Obama, because I was hoping he would be a great president for the blacks so they could stop being so racist against white people because they think the white people invented slavery when actually it was the black. Anyway, I don't want to go there. But Mr. Putin, you drew out that race card, and I want to know why. It's finally out, but knowing Russians and Vladimir Putin, I can see that there is he's going to gain a political upper hand to celebrate it. So when I was taking Russian in college, my professor was from a family who had been evicted from Russia because they were 
basically tied in with the czar at the time. And so they were living in the United States. And he told me about the politics that they shared. He made two interesting predictions to me back in the early 80s. The first prediction was that software engineers would be the new aristocracy in the country. The second prediction he made was that at some point, the United States would be more like Russia and Russia would be more like the United States. And that in this country, we would have a racial civil war. Now, with this announcement, time the way it is, while I think it's great... And I think it's cool what, what Putin is doing because, you know, hey, being inclusive is awesome. But it also makes me wonder if this guy knew something that I, none of us really know. You assume he has no benefit of saying this. There's way more going on than you and I know. I know that all of the religions and all of the governments of the world are one. But not a good unity. An evil unity like we saw with COVID, March of 2020. This coming from a guy who has been known to persecute quote-unquote Christians in his country. If you're pretty new to religion, you probably should keep your mouth shut on things that you don't know nothing about. Because what's ironic is how those individuals, the African descent, We'll sit there and say, we can't trust nothing that comes out of the white man's mouth. And yet Vladimir Putin, somebody they don't even know, a white man, comes out and says, oh, we have the secret that we've been hiding from everybody that the Messiah is black. And they bought it real quick. And while raging criticisms are going on in one end, on the other end, strangely, there are others who are conscientious, it seems, remorseful for the historic racial oppression and old monstrous lies established and upheld for so long. As I speak, I'm going to ask the white Americans in the room to please repeat after me. <clears throat> on behalf of myself and on behalf of my country. <laughs> to you and all African Americans. <laughs> from the beginning of our nation's history. In honor of your ancestors and on behalf of your children. Please hear this from my heart. I apologize. Please forgive us. With this prayer, I acknowledge the depth of the evils that have been perpetrated against black people. From slavery to lynchings, to white supremacist laws, to the denial of voting rights, to all the ways, both large and small, all of them evil, all of them wrong, for all the oppression and all of the injustices. I apologize. Please forgive us. Well, young lady. That's part of one of the reasons why I've been ostracized by so many people in my life. Because I've known that for years. I mean, first you have to look at where Jesus came from. It's all dark skin tone people over there anyway, pretty much. All right, so I just saw what Vladimir Putin just dropped. I'm pretty new to religion, so I've been looking at things. I always thought he was black, I really did. So I told my buddy who has been in religion his entire life, super Christian, and he was like, oh yeah, you know, he was always kind of more black than white. And I was like, maybe he just doesn't get it. Like, if Jesus is black and David and, you know, all the other people are black and black people have been enslaved by the white people for the last 200 years and we've been lying to them about Jesus is black, not white. We completely lied about it and then enslaved them. Black people are gonna be pretty pissed. Rightfully so, I would be fucking mad too. Okay, I've known for years, since I can remember honestly, that Jesus was not a Caucasian. That Jesus was a darker skin toned person. I've known that for years, and I've never had a problem understanding and believing that, okay? 
<laughs> it's funny though. There's been people like me out there for years saying that very thing. And they're discredited and they're they're ostracized and, and they wanna uh, people like, oh no, we gotta shut that one up. But the minute a world leader steps on the stage and says it, oh my god, it's front page news. I don't care. I'm glad it's getting put out there because it's the truth. And I've known it since as long as I can remember. The truth, as we all know, would always shine, even in the darkest dark, so that people in the distant darkest parts of the world could see, right from where they are, that they behold nothing but truth. However, one would have to acquiesce to the logical consideration that the impartial words of the good book or holy Bible did not specify Jesus's skin tone and may have only done so deliberately to focus all attention on what is really important, that is, the saving of souls. This was a point well made on the matter by Jeff Marshalls, a system engineer, Los Angeles. Despite the mistiness passionate scholars or seekers are said to have encountered in the quest to know things as they really are, ascertaining the very skin color of the Messiah while he was yet in our midst is not supposed to pose any difficulties. The interrelated activities surrounding the stories of his existence all the way down to his crucifixion made this very glaring. Which all brings us closer once again to the surrounding ill racial and oppressive treatments the people of color may also have been faced with in that era of the Christ. That slave-like treatment. Isn't it relatable to the way Jesus was treated? Isn't it also relatable to the way his name was changed, just as slaveholders are akin to changing the names of their subjects or slaves as a way of asserting their slaveholding signature. Thorns on his brow and his face was bleeding. And they laughed at him and they spit on him. And they mocked him. And with one snap of his finger, 72,000 angels had already drawn their swords ready to come to his rescue and wipe this planet out of existence in the universe. And Jesus said, no, to this end was I born. That was the American evangelist Billy Graham in a crusade held as far back as 1971, reminding us all just what it meant to be black in those days and what it meant to be Jesus at the same time. Come to think of it, who was the man that was picked from the crowd to help carry Jesus' crucifixion cross and why was he singled out in the first place to do the task? Couldn't it have been for no other reason than the color of his skin? Billy Graham wasn't quite finished with us here on the vital information he had to give. And he dragged and lifted and hauled that cross. And don't you black people ever forget one thing. The man that helped Jesus carry that cross was a black man. And don't ever forget another thing. Jesus belongs to Africa. He was born in that part of the world that touches Africa and Asia and Europe. And Jesus was not a white man like me. We don't know what the color of his skin, but it must have been a dark color like the people of his day, because he was a man like them. Billy Graham, from 1918 to 2018, must have been a man of great insight to have said this in his time. Simon of Cyrene was an African man summoned from the crowd to carry Jesus' cross to Calvary. Simon was black. Here is an insightful one from PC Camp. Christ the Messiah was black as he was from the tribe of Judah. Jacob was a black man, his sons and grandsons were dark-skinned as all the Hebrew people who descended from Jacob were black or dark-skinned. The descendants of Jacob including King David, King Solomon, up to all the kings through the Solomonic dynasty including Haile Selassie are all black or dark-skinned people, being obviously from the tribe of Judah. Christ the Messiah was in fact black based on all the original authentic paintings of him before all those paintings were destroyed by a decree passed by Pope Alexander VI who hated the fact that the Christ was black. This has always been about being black. Pope Alexander VI had ordered the widespread destruction of Christ's paintings by fire and replaced those paintings with the image of his own son named Cesare Borgia. Search the name Cesare Borgia. He is actually not what Christ looked like, but his image was used to replace the original paintings of the Christ, who was black. Now let us confirm the words of PC Camp by quickly and briefly filling ourselves in on 
Cesare Borgia. Who was Cesare Borgia? Cesare Borgia, any 13th September 1475 to 12th March 1507, was an Italian cardinal and condottiero, or like some would say, a mobster. He was an illegitimate son of Pope Alexander VI and member of the Valencian House of Borgia. His fight for power was a major inspiration for the book The Prince by Niccolò Machiavelli. The Borgia family was famous for the enormous amount of political power they wielded in the 14th and 15th centuries, particularly within the papacy. They were often accused of crimes like simony, nepotism, murder and incest. However, in an effort to keep black slaves oppressed so that they could sustain their rulership in Rome, Pope Alexander VI hired Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo to paint all of the images of the Black Christ in Europe in the image of his son Cesare Borgia. Since both of these artists were well known, a competition broke out between the two to see who could impress the Pope more by making a new image of the Pope's son that would deceive the world into thinking that Cesare was Jesus. So the majority of the images displaying the white European-looking Jesus that we see in paintings today at churches and Christian stores is actually a picture of Cesare Borgia, not the Messiah. But Leo and Michelangelo didn't just stop there. They painted all of the people of the Bible to be white, deceiving the entire world of what the people of the book really looked like. Over time, these false images have saturated the minds of the masses to such a degree that the notion of the Messiah being black sounds like a lie. Many people, especially the black people, regard the notion of the Messiah and the disciples being black as an attempt to instill black pride in our race, rather than considering if it could be true or not. America has brainwashed us so much that when you try to tell our people the truth, they can't receive it because they have been taught so long to believe in lies. In closing, this world, my friends, is not a fantasy. It's within our reach. Today, we've cracked the foundation of falsehoods, chipped away at stereotypes, and started dismantling the walls of inequality and racism. But the journey doesn't end here. Rather, it's the ignited spark. We are the bridge builders and the truth speakers, the ones who will shatter limitations. Let's carry this momentum forward. Let every conversation be a step towards empathy. Every action a brick laid on the path to equality. Let it become a wildfire of change. Let us be the generation that rewrites the narrative. We are the dreamers, the doers, the ones who bridge the divides. We are the voices that rise above the noise, the hands that reach across the chasms. Together, let's break the barriers, not with anger, but with the unstoppable force of unity. Let's challenge assumptions, celebrate differences, and amplify the voices that have been silenced for too long. That brings us to the end of yet another interesting video segment. And if you learned a thing or two, kindly reach out to us in the comment section below, share your thoughts with us, and we shall gladly pick from them. Support our works too by hitting the like button of this video, share with family and friends to keep spreading our eye-opening black narrative, and kindly subscribe to keep getting notified for more. We are glad to have you with us. Thank you for watching.